Hi, this is Ernest Maynard with Liberty Realty, and I am a realtor in the New North New Jersey area. Been doing real estate for about 18 years. I specialize in short sales, working with homeowners and investors. And today I'm going to give you a little bit more information on how a short sale works and how it can benefit you as a home seller. You've done this before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You've introduced yourself for the past 18 years. So, so you know exactly how to do it. Uh, now, was I looking at the, I always say, was I looking at the right place or looking at the wrong place? Because that's always my um, I don't even know where, to, I just look at, I don't know where to look at. I, if I look at myself, I get confused. It's, it's yeah, weird. that's what everybody says. That's how I try to like look at you and I'm like, but then I don't want to be looking like I'm looking at an angle. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. So great introduction, by the way. Um, you know, you've been 18 years in the real estate side of things. So for the past 18 years, have you only worked with short sales or has there well, been? Short sales weren't around in early 2000. So they started in 2000 or 2008 and that's when I actually started working in it first few short sales were very tough because the banks had no clue and I had no clue but I had a friend who was willing to do it with me gave me the house to kind of learn from and from that point on just kind of kept developing the skills okay so let's start I guess with with the first basic question is what is a short sale so a short sale is when a homeowner owes more than the house is currently worth and normally a short sell is because the owner is behind in the mortgage, but it doesn't always have to be that you're behind. You could actually have something coming up where you know you're going to default and you can start speaking with the bank ahead of time to start working on a short sell. But the main thing is you have to not have equity in your property. So you owe more than it's currently worth. Okay. So, so the key is your loan and I'll just give a number. Let's say you bought the house and you owe, three hundred thousand dollars on your mortgage now the value of the house is two hundred and fifty thousand and for whatever reason you can't pay your mortgage and the bank is willing to accept less than what you owe is that correct, correct? that is correct so the short sale is a negotiating process so once you get an offer for your house you will submit it will be submitted to the bank then the bank will do their due diligence which is they're going to send someone out to give a value and if that value is in line with what the property is worth, not what you owe. If it's in line with what the property is worth, then they will be willing to work out a short sale with you. Okay. So you say a negotiating process. So this is not the typical home sale. You're getting an offer. You're accepting it. The mortgage will get approved. The bank is going back and forth. With they, you, don't ha or they don't have to go back and forth with the value but they do have to, there's behind the scenes, a whole team. So the bank has a whole investor team that actually you work, whoever's doing the process of negotiating it, because it is a negotiation. They will work with someone at the bank by submitting the offer. The bank then looks at the offer, sends out an appraiser to value the property for them. This is totally independent of the buyer's mortgage. This is the bank side of it. Okay. So they send someone out to give a value. That value comes back, they review that value, and if it's in line with the offer that was submitted, they will generally accept it. If it's not in line, they may come back and say, let's negotiate and see if we can find out something that works for both parties. At that point in time, if you work it out, then you can proceed with the short sale moving forward. Okay, makes sense. So what happens to that, to the debt that's not being paid? Let's say the bank takes a 250,000, but you owed 300, that $50,000, does it get dismissed or does the seller have to cover that? It gets dismissed. There's uh, something called deficiency. So again, using your example, 300,000, they accept an offer of 250, you back out fees that they're paying. So maybe they're netting to 30. So that's a $70,000 deficiency. They weigh that deficiency for you. So they don't come after you for it. But with anything, short sale or foreclosure, if you do it, they're going to send you that as a 1099C, which is a cancellation of the debt. So you'll get a $70,000 cancellation of the debt. The one thing is that back in 2008, they passed something called basically that forgives the homeowner if it's their primary residence for that debt. So it's okay. called a Debt Forgiveness Act. It's been renewed almost every year since then. And definitely in 2020, I expect them to renew it based on what's going on with COVID. So mm -hmm. what's going to happen is you'll get that, you'll take it to your accountant. On there, it actually kind of tells you how the debt is, like what they're gonna, what you're getting, and then what's forgiven. 
So when you take it to your account, your accountant does it, they basically wipe it out. It can be wiped up to $2 million. So most homeowners are never going to have that problem because they yeah. don't make that much, you know, cancellation of debt, that much money. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in turn, doing a short sale, the me, I'm selling my house and the bank is taking a short, which is the, the word, right? Short sale. They're not making Correct. the money. So I'm not making any money either. Correct. You, you can't make money on the deal. So they're, at the closing, it has to basically wipe out anything. So you won't get paid at closing. But there is something that the banks are doing, which is called relocation. Okay. So a lot of the banks, again, if it's your primary residence, you live in the house, they will give you $3,000 for relocation. That is paid as a check to you at closing. So you do get some kind of money to help you move on to the next place. But that's the only money, and that's by the bank directly. It's not something that's going to be, you know, specifically where you're making money. It's just the bank is offering you this as an incentive right. to do the short sale. Right. So is every bank doing this, or does the seller have to request this? It's Normally, it's not every bank. I, let's put it this way. The person who's negotiating it will request it at the time of negotiating the short sale. Okay. Banks, I'm not going to even say every bank, because every bank is different in the mm -hmm. sense of every loan is different from who backs that loan. So it's all about the backing. But generally, if you live in the house and it's your primary residence, most of the time you do get that money. Yeah. And that's nice. I mean, that's a nice help. You're, you're yeah. clearly struggling financially when you're doing a short sale. Correct. Um, so an extra 3000 to go rent an apartment or, mm -hmm. or, you know, if you already rented, maybe help with furniture or paying off some other debt or something is, is a nice blessing. Correct. And the one thing about it is it's called relocation. So it's in the sense of to help you move. If for some reason you move a week or two before closing, it's not like they're going to take the money from you. It's still money you're going to get as yeah. long as you, you know, were in the house when you started the process. The banks understand you may have to move before the closing, so they're still willing to give you that money, that relocation money. Okay. Now, I mean, you've been doing this long enough. How many times, like, or is it common to see people who are doing a short sale vacate the house and just leave it empty and just abandon the property? Um, quite often. <laughs> and the reason is people find something like a friend maybe is going to help you with the rental and you're in the process of negotiating that short sale. And they're like, I got to get out. I don't, I totally understand that the bank understands that. Also before short sales, people may be scared that the bank's going to foreclose. So they move out just as a safety precaution. You can still do a short sale. You don't have to be in the house to do the short sale. Okay. It's just, if you moved out, you may run the risk of not getting that relocation. Because mm. the, house, the bank is going to see the house is vacant. So every time it's different. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It just really depends on the bank and negotiating process. Yeah, no, great explanation. Great clarity. Um, let's talk about the, the buyer side a little bit then. Mm -hmm. um, for somebody who's a first time home buyer, never bought a house, maybe has taken some of these real estate classes, read some books, has a realtor working with them. Is, is the short, is buying a short sale is it how slow is the process? Because you mentioned negotiating several times. Is it what you? Is it a three month thing? Is there an expectation of time? It is a minimum of three months. Normally three to six months, and that's from the point of the bank getting the actual offer. So right. even if you started stuff before there was an offer, the clock really starts ticking once they get the offer. I tell people three to six months. It could go longer. It just depends on how much back and forth there is between the person negotiating and the bank. If anyone has a time clock and they have to move in a certain amount of time, right. I would never recommend getting into a short sale because again, no one can tell how long it's going to take. You know, I've had short sales. Honestly, I got negotiated in two weeks and closed wow. fairly quickly because wow. it's about, you know, every, every loan is different. Every investor is different. It depends right. on where they are in the process. So there's no guarantee. So first time buyers, it is a great thing. You just have to have the time. That's so the you're, right, right. So if you're patient and not in a rush, a short sale might be a good deal. But if, you're, yeah, if your lease is up in, in two months, mm -hmm. clearly you might not have the, the time of, you know. Exactly. And you are at the bank's mercy with the clock. <laughs> it's like you can tell them whatever time you want. They're going to kind of control yeah. the time yeah. a little bit for you. <laughs> um. What so and the other thing I guess for a buyer would be what's the difference with the short sale and the foreclosure? Because I think you know you you'll see like, if you don't understand terminology you'll see short sale you'll see foreclosure REO. What's the the main difference on on both? Okay, 
So sure sell is the owner still owns the property. So the seller is the owner of the property. The bank may make the decision on the offer, but the seller still owns the property. Okay. Foreclosure REO means the bank has already taken it back at a share of sale and they are the physical owners of the property. So when you put in an offer for a foreclosure on REO, you're putting an offer in directly with the bank and they are the owners and they make the decision on that number. So the owner doesn't sign it, the bank actually signs it. So it's a totally different process. I see. And with REOs and foreclosures, the bank already has a number in mind. So when you submit your offer, they're gonna either counter back and then accept it quickly and you keep moving. Normally they require you to close within 30 days. So it's a fast process. It's okay. not like a short sale where you have to do a lot of negotiating back and forth. No. Okay, so in, in that case, it might be a little bit more uh, appealing to a person in urgency because mm -hmm. the bank is also looking to move quick. Correct, correct. Yeah, okay, I like it. I mean, so for the REOs then, does the house have to be vacated at that point? Usually when they put an REO on the market, not always. It depends that they're going to be vacant because the bank, when they foreclose, it's not like they put it right back on the market. It's usually a good six months to a year once they foreclose. That's why they don't like to foreclose because they got a whole property and they're not in the business of holding property. Right. They're in the business of loaning out money. So right. this, this takes up part of their assets by doing that and their money. So they take about six months to a year to get everything in place. They try to vacate it during that time. So they will actually go to the homeowner, have the agent or whoever's handling it, go to the homeowner, try to get them out. I've seen it where a lot of times they can't get them out. And that's when you see properties that may say owner occupy, I mean, occupy, you buy it as is, you have to deal with evicting the person out yourself. Oh, wow. So, so wait, is, is, as an REO, the bank is not allowed to evict them like a regular eviction or? Do they just they not want can, to deal with but it, they sometimes they don't want to deal with it, and then other times it takes several months. So they might say, you know, instead of us starting it and then yes. having to wait four or five months for it to happen, we'll just put it on the market and then you buy it and deal with that tenant, that tenant now basically yourself. I see. I see that. That makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, the differences are it's such a big difference. And again, I, I see the terminology used a lot. Um, and sometimes I'm just, I'm sure I'm unsure if people understand where they have advantages and disadvantages, mm -hmm. um, especially as a, as a first time home buyer, very different for the investor, um, yeah, the investor, obviously they, they're going to educate themselves along the process and they probably are going to come to the table with a lot more cash, um, which can be appealing to the bank or to the short sale process. Um, correct. And the other thing about a short sale is if you get involved in a short sale, you're the only person making that offer and dealing with the bank at that time. REOs, a lot of times the bank will say, you know, it's going to sit on the market for a certain amount of days, a week to two weeks. And then there's multiple offers coming and you're dealing with several people bidding on it. So it's a little wow. different with the short sale. Short sales are contingent on one particular buyer. So when your offer is submitted, that offer acceptance is coming back with your name on it or the company's name on it. So it's very specific. Uh, You're wow. not going to have people submitting 10 offers to the bank. It's only one offer, and that one offer is the one that's getting negotiated. That makes sense. Um, so then I'm looking to – you're representing me as a, buy, as, a, as a buyer's agent, and we're looking at some short sales. Is there, a cer is there a certain amount of cash that helps when you're going through that process? Like if you put an all-cash offer, is the bank looking – at that more seriously, as opposed to somebody going FHA three and a half percent down? Usually with the short sale, the bank does not care about cash unless it's a property that's really damaged and they know no one can get a mortgage. But if okay. it's a really good property, like a home that's in good condition, maybe it's only a few minor flaws, mm -hmm. then they will take the highest offer. Because again, they're getting a value and that value is gonna come back to them. So they want the offer closer to that value. Now, if it's cash and it's a four or $5,000 difference, again, you're only submitting one offer. So that offer would have to come oh, okay. in at the same time. Remember, it's when you first get that offer, whatever the offer is signed, it's by that agent deciding and the homeowner's deciding okay. what's the best offer to submit to the bank. Mm. Then the bank works from there. So if there's already an FHA offer that's been submitted to the bank, you're not going to now submit a cash offer. No, you're going to negotiate that FHA offer and that cash offer is just kind of sitting in the background waiting. Because we're short sales, you do have to go through the same process you do with a regular sale. So you go through attorney review, you go through inspections, you do all those same things. So legally the owner is bound by that contract. So that's why you can't flip and send multiple contracts. Um, 
Yeah. So, uh, I was, so, so I was saying the contract process is the same, that you're legally bound. Oh, oh yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Thank you. That, that actually reminded me. So <laughs> when somebody submits the offer to the short sale process, if they want to get like a discount after the home inspection, let's say there's termites or structural issue, does the bank renegotiate to accept these things or is it harder because it's a short sale and they're trying to just get highest well, and best? This is the thing. Usually I tell people, I would like you to do your home inspections quickly because if something does come up, I want to have that before I submit to the bank. So, I mean, there's stuff that, you know, unforeseen things that can come up, but generally if you know the house is really in bad shape, then I tell you to come in, do your home inspection first, and then let's get the offer based on you doing your home inspection. If for some reason termites come up to the bank, that's not as big of a deal because the treatment of that is like 600 bucks okay. or so. So they don't really consider that major. Okay. If the roof is falls in and the house is getting flooded, then yeah, you can negotiate something because they know at this point in time, another buyer may not be able to buy that and yeah. they're going to have more of a problem on their hands. So it's about major things you could okay. probably negotiate that come up, but minor stuff, cosmetic stuff, they're not going to negotiate on. They're like, make the offer based on that. Because remember, they're sending someone out to do the value. That person is going to see those cosmetic things. Right. It doesn't really matter. But the major stuff they will see and they will have to adjust their value anyway based on that. I see. Yeah. I mean, I, I think over the, next, over the next 12 to 18 months, I mean, it's hard to not expect short sales to kind of go through the roof because people aren't working. Um, across the board, every industry... Mm -hmm. um, in every state just because of COVID-19 and all the restrictions. So, I mean, I know there's forbearances, which we can talk about uh, briefly also, but short sales will increase. So a lot of people will be looking at it as either an opportunity to invest in multiple properties or an opportunity to buy their first home, which might have some, some cosmetic issues, which I think most people at this point will take the discount yep. and, you know, paint the house themselves or do minor repairs or get a handyman to help out. Um, so it's, it's good that we're touching up on that topic a lot. Um, forbearances, are you familiar with the forbearance process? Familiar with it. And it's a tough thing. And the reason is I think a lot of people don't fully understand what it means. And all it means is that the bank is allowing you to put off paying for a few months. At the end of that time, you're going to owe that money all back at that time. So let's say you do three months and you don't pay your mortgage at the end of the beginning of the fourth month, they're going to expect you to pay the fourth month plus the three months you didn't pay. Okay. So that's the thing people aren't getting. A forbearance is different from a deferment, which basically means they're allowing you to defer the payments, either at the end of the mortgage, put it on the back end, or you work out a payment plan where you say, all right, I'm deferring three months. And then over the next eight months, I'll pay you back those three months that I deferred. That's different than a forbearance. A forbearance is what they're putting out there and people are thinking it's the best thing. And I'm like, no, you're going to end up on that money back in the fourth month or the fifth month and you're not going to have it. And then most likely these, a lot of these people are going to end up, end up in short sales because they're not going to be able to repay it. They'll try to do a loan mod. It may not work out for them. And then at that point in time, you're screwed. So. Wow. Yeah, I, honestly, I didn't. Sorry about that word, but yeah, you're in yeah, that shape. No, no, screwed is P13, so that's okay. Um, yeah, honestly, I didn't. I didn't know the difference with with the forbearance um, and the deferment either. I mean, all you hear right now in the news and people are calling. Oh my goodness, I called my bank. They're gonna do a forbearance, mm -hmm. you know. And and it does sound exciting, but you're right. How many people are able to have three months? Let's say two thousand dollars a month, six thousand. And then mm -hmm. you have to pay that 6000 plus the next month of mortgage. I mean, if you didn't have the money for the past three months, you clearly exactly. weren't saving it um, for that event. So, wow. I, I and they may, allow you, they may allow you to do like four or five months to pay it back. But again, you think about it, it's the mortgage plus, let's say you did it over six months. That's the mortgage plus another half a mortgage for the next six months, you got to pay that. If mm -hmm. you're getting back on your feet, there's no way you're catching up like that. Right. Well, I mean, and it's not just a mortgage. If you're deferring your mortgage, you're probably having trouble with credit cards, having trouble with your car payment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so all of it kind of can pile on. And, and just to be Correct. clear, the first thing that would happen once you default is they'd go into short. So how fast does the short sale begin after default? Is it? There's, there's no time specific time. What's going to happen is if you're 90 days late, they'll do something called list pending, which basically means now they're saying you are behind 90 days. 
you're in the pre foreclosure stages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every state is different. New Jersey is one of those states where it does take a little bit more time to get to the state, the level of being the share at the sheriff's sale, which is the actual foreclosure. Mm -hmm. But again, every month is a late that affects your credit. So the longer you drag it out, if you know you're not going to keep the property, the worse you're making it for yourself. Because that means there's more money that you owe the bank. Also, wow. that means that, again, your credit is being banged every single month. And that's the thing about short sales is that it's not the short sale that affects your credit. It's about the late. So the more you're late, the more your credit is going to get affected. I see. So let's touch on, on the credit score. When somebody fully finishes the short sale and the house is sold, how does that reflect? I mean, the bankruptcy shows seven years um, on the credit. What does the short sale do to somebody's credit score? So the short sale, the day you stop it, the day you close, your late stops. So at that point in time, you no longer have late. So your credit is kind of going to take a slight hit because you don't have a mortgage anymore. So it's maybe like a 50 to a 150 point hit, okay. but it's going to say settled on the credit report, settled either in, basically not settled in full, but sometimes it does say settled in full, but it always says settled. Unlike a foreclosure, it literally says foreclosure, right. and it's going to be at least a 250 plus bang on your credit the day you close. So it's always going to be more, and it's going to last for at least seven to ten years. And again, you have to report it anytime you go for another loan down the road. The main question is, have you had a foreclosure? And it's going to—you have to disclose it, and it's always going to show up in the county records. That's the one thing people don't realize. It could be uh, twenty years from now, the foreclosure is still in the county records. It may not oh, be wow. on your credit, but it's still right. in the county records. So it, that's but, the difference. Is Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was going to say the short sale does not show up as. Um, it's just a settled loan. All it says is the loan is settled. Like if you right. paid it off, it just says settled. It may say settled at a discount or something, but it says settled. Right. So it's like the loan was paid off. You got out of it. You moved on. Right. It, the lates are going to be on your credit for two years at least because that's kind of how the credit flows. Yeah. But once that two years is up, those lates no longer show up anymore. So you can go ahead and, and I mean, yeah, the, the thing with, with the short sale, I guess the big benefit is if you catch it early on, get out of it as fast as possible, your two year credit history. I mean, for those next two years, you're rebuilding your finances anyways. Exactly. You can save up two, three years later, go ahead and purchase a new home, hopefully not make mistakes over purchasing or anything the second time around, if that was the case. Um, so you would recommend somebody that's financially going through a struggle, go to do the short sale. Don't let it go to the point where it's foreclosed. Correct. Yeah. The foreclosure is never, like I said, there's so many things related to foreclosure that people don't tell you. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned, the county records is always in your county records. The other thing is if you're in a financial institution, like you have a job that's financial, they always pull your credit. And if they see anything like that, they could actually deny you a job. Or if you even have a job, you can lose a license because of it. If you have some type of job that requires government clearance, you will lose your government clearance. There's oh. a whole lot of things that people don't tell you oh, wow. about foreclosures that stick with you. The other thing is, I mentioned deficiency because you asked about that earlier about the short sale, like how does it work? With the foreclosures, there is a deficiency. And at any point in time, because you're gonna get a 1099, just like with a short sale, but it's mm -hmm. gonna be for more money because they're not gonna do it until they clear off that loan. So they may have a whole bunch of expenses they're gonna keep adding onto that loan once they foreclose. Oh, wow. And then you'll get your 1099, which has more expenses. And they can also, at any point in time, if they want to come back in the first, I wanna say it's three to five years, and slap it on your credit for something else. So let's say you get another house down the road, they can slap it right on top of that house and you can't sell that house until you get them to release that lien that they've now attached to your home. Oh, and wow. I've had that happen to several people who didn't even realize that. Oh, and wow. we're trying to close our loan. And we're like, what's this mortgage? It's like, oh, that house foreclosed several years ago. Well, the bank now attached the lien. And now we have to negotiate with them on top of doing whatever you're doing. So if it's a regular sale down the road on that home, you still have a lien you have to negotiate. Wow. I, I definitely did not even know that they were willing to. I mean, I know that, that technically they can come after you for some of the debt, but I didn't know that they were mm -hmm. hovering and waiting. Yeah. And a lot of times you may not even know it. You get ready to sell your house 10 years down the road and you're like, what is this lien? And they're like, wow. oh, that's the lien from the foreclosure I did a long time ago. Because they're not going to tell you they slapped it on it. They're just going to mm -hmm. slap it on and you may not have a lien. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's sneaky. But, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, but that goes to show the, the big difference. Because I, I asked earlier, 
um, it, you know, when somebody stops making their payments, abandoning the house, clearly they should, if, if they vacated the home, they should still pro- go through the short sale negotiation process. And it's a stressful time. So, so the, my question is, can someone do the short sale on their own, like a for sale by owner and negotiate with the bank, or should they go to get a real estate agent who, who's an expert in that area? Yeah, no problem. The banks always want the home listed. That's the, one of the first requirements of a short sale is it has to be listed. Okay. And a lot of times they want it listed for a certain amount of time. Okay. So usually they want it on the market for 30 days. So you're going to have to go through an agent. If you try mm-hmm. to do it as a physical, they're going to say that's not an active way of trying to sell. We are trying to get the most money for this property. So put it on the market as an active listing. Yeah. So that we can get an offer that's a valid offer and then negotiate from there. And they pay the commission. So the homeowner doesn't have to worry. The bank pays your commission, they pay your attorney fees, they pay your transfer tax. They generally pay the closing fees because they know you're in a situation where you're distressed and you don't have the money. So they're willing to right. help you get out of it by paying all these fees that are related to closing a real estate transaction. I mean, it's sense. only a benefit to the homeowner. Yeah, yeah. And even for the bank, I mean, for them to hover extra debt at closing over your head when they know you don't have it um, mm-hmm. and potentially risk not getting the sale. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Correct. Um, exactly. So, so let me ask you this. And I think we talked about this briefly over the phone. There's investors out there who are, you know, they post signs all the, over the place that they'll buy your house or, or they'll give you cash for the house. Mm-hmm. Um, some of these investors, what they're doing is they're offering a person who's in pre foreclosure or potentially going to short sale money um, to vacate the property and hand over. Is it the deed or the title of the property? Um, Sometimes it's the deed. Other times it's just for them to negotiate a short sale. Not always. If someone does come to you and ask you to hand over your deed, I would not recommend it. And the main reason is that at that point in time, you have no control over the property. You still have the mortgage as a liability that you're still responsible for, but Mm -hmm. you literally don't own the property anymore. So they can control if they're doing a short sale, they can keep you tied up in it forever until they get the number they want. If they mm-hmm. don't get it, they can still keep you tied up and they may let your house just get foreclosed. So now you've been completely screwed in this process because you don't have control of the property. And right. you, like I said, the main thing is you are still liable for that mortgage. Just you transfer that deed does not transfer that mortgage. That liability is still your responsibility. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, because I think what, what ends up happening, again, someone's in financial distress and an, an investor comes and says, hey, here's $7,000. Mm-hmm. sign over the deed, I'll take care of the short sale, or, you know, and they'll, they'll obviously explain things that make it look great. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like you just said, if they don't get the offer they're looking for, they might just let the house go to foreclosure, which affects you so negatively, as opposed to you doing the short sale, getting someone to take an offer that the bank's going to accept, um, right. and then walking away. So that's, that's good clarification, because that, unfortunately, it's easy to get taken advantage of when you don't really understand the full process. Mm-hmm. Um, and when there's financial distress and someone throws money at you and yep. you need the money, I mean, $7,000, $10,000 can yeah. um, help you relocate or help you pay or catch up on some bills or, or buy food, if, if you're, you know, Correct. depending on how bad things are. So it's good to have that clarity. Um, the other clarity on that is people, a lot of times the investors offer money to the homeowner and they're like, okay, I'll give you $10,000 for this short sale. If it doesn't go through, you're not getting $10,000. They're only doing it because they're offering it at a price. They want to get it at a specific price. If they don't get it at that price, you're not getting your money. Right. (laughs) So it's kind of like I tell people all the time, anyone can say what they're going to give you, but until the bank comes in and does a value on a short sale, there is no guarantee you're getting that money. So following behind someone who may say that and may not have the experience on how to negotiate is not always the best thing. Because again, remember, they're looking out for their interests, not right. yours. So if they're going to keep trying and trying to get what they want. If they don't get it, then guess what happens? You right. get foreclosed. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, look, there's some, there's some very experienced investors out there who I'm sure have relationship with the banks or with certain realtors who have relationships with the banks. Mm-hmm. Um, there's investors out there who, who do know what they're doing. So I'm sure some of them can yeah. come to the table and, mm-hmm. and put things in writing legally with a lawyer. So yeah. I'm not saying don't look at the option, but if you are mm-hmm. going to, the risk is higher for you, the seller, um, than it is for the investor. 
Um, Correct. Yeah, just, like I said, I'm not, I would never tell anybody not to do that with it, work with an investor. The thing is, just my recommendation is always never turn over your deed. You can yeah. go through the deal with them, just never, with, never give anyone your deed. That's my main thing, because at that point in time, you have no control over whatever happens. And as a homeowner, the whole point of doing a short sale is so that you have some type of control over the deal. And if you give your exactly. deed away, you've lost that control. So, you know, anything else, you know, you can work out, sign stuff. It's just keep the deed yourself yeah. in your name. That, that's a great tip. Um, one of the things, um, one of the things I constantly talk about uh, when I, I'm doing a, another group of videos with business owners, um, and we kind of, especially on legal and accounting, you don't have to be an accountant or a legal expert to own a business. And same thing in real estate. You don't have to be a, an yeah. accountant or a legal <laughs> expert, but you should meet with professionals along the way so they can Correct. guide. Um, mm -hmm. So in the short sale process, you know, is that something you'd recommend? Like if somebody says, Hey, I, you know, I'm going to use it as my realtor. Do you ever recommend to them? Hey, you might want to meet with an attorney, especially if investors are coming in, giving offers or, or making suggestions for, for things. I normally I don't tell them that ahead of time because remember it's a regular transaction. So you're going to have to have an attorney anyway to go through attorney review. So any deal you sign, you're going to go through attorney review. That's when the attorney gets involved. So really beforehand, you don't have to have an attorney because all you're doing is signing a listing agreement to put your house on the market. You get an offer, you go through attorney review. Once that's done, that's when everything starts going to the bank. At that point in time, it's the bank discussing and negotiating what was sent to them. So you don't have to get someone involved beforehand, like, you know, unless, again, unless you're doing something outside of the typical standard yeah. short sale, right. then maybe you want to, but a lot of attorneys are not going to work, deal, put agreement together because you as the seller are not supposed to receive money. So they're not going to sign, put a document together that says you generally, not always, generally put a document together that says you're going to get a certain amount of money from this person because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to get money. And part of the agreements you sign with the bank say that you did not receive money I at see. the time of COVID. Yeah. I see. So like I said, it's, it's a, it's a process that's misunderstood. Um, and, and again, you drive down most highways and neighborhoods and you'll see, you know, uh, cash for your house yeah. or all these signs. Mm -hmm. um, so you were saying you drive down the road, you see signs. So you drive, yeah, you drive down the road and you see signs, uh, cash buyer, cash for your house. Not all of them, but most of those handwritten signs, um, you know, they're not even professionally done. I'm not a hustler. I'm not a hustler by any means, but most of them are um, looking to do some kind of a transaction that doesn't, you know, where they, again, the benefit is really all in their hands. Mm -hmm. And not even seasoned or smart enough to bring something to the table that benefits both parties. Um, so it is, it is a tricky area. Um, again, it is troubling times for people when, when you're discussing short sales, it's not a happy process, unfortunately. Correct. Um, so I'm sure with the experience you have, you know how to, you know, maneuver, um, through, through all of it. And, and through the years, I've definitely come to realize that I know what I do as a short sale expert. My goal is always, and I don't care what anybody says, is to help the homeowner get out of the situation. So I am always looking out for the homeowner. So even if an investor comes in, puts an offer in, if it's not going to work out, I'm not going to hold that homeowner hostage. I'm like, mm -hmm. our goal is now to get another offer that's a valid offer that the bank wants because my thing is to help you get from under this house. And that is not a lot of people who deal with short sales don't have that same feeling. It's about what am I getting out of it, not what is the homeowner getting out of it. And that's a tough thing, so. Yeah, you have yeah. to be because it's a hard situation for the homeowner. So you have yeah. to be sympathetic to that. You have to be understanding. And like I said, someone wants a deed. They're holding your deed, and you're in this distressed situation. They basically are keeping you hostage. It's not benefit, not helping you. It's helping them. And if you, you know, you're already under enough stress, and you really need to stress to someone else holding you basically at gunpoint yeah. because they now control your situation. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You couldn't have said it better. You know, the the real estate. Um, industry has so many, um, I mean, everyone, anyone can get a real estate license. It's not a difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yeah. so, I, I think a lot of the videos I do with, with real estate agents and mortgage professionals, everyone knows someone with a real estate license. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they know a qualified real estate professional. Um, exactly. And, and the, I feel like the difference lies in what you just said. You're looking out for the buyer or the seller 
um, whoever you're representing, you're looking out for their interests, mm -hmm. not your own interests, which again, for you, same thing. It, you know, you might be in a short sell for 12 months with one person. You mm -hmm. didn't make any money during all this negotiation, all of the open houses you're doing, all the walkthroughs, all the phone calls. You haven't made a penny in this mm -hmm. process. So really, you know, like I said, you the delayed gratification, I'm sure is great, but some people don't have that same uh, motive when it comes to, or they get frustrated as a realtor too, during the process, you can get Correct. frustrated. You know what, the, you know, the bank's being difficult. I'm just gonna, I know this offer will get accepted even though it's not in the best interest of the buyer. Yeah. There's people who I'm sure are doing that. Oh uh, no, definitely. So, and I have a few attorneys who joke with me because they're like, there's deals that I've literally dragged out. I, I even go back to the first deal I did where <laughs> the appraiser, you know, came out several times, kept coming out, redoing the property, valuing it. Cause it's like, we just could not get it done. The banks didn't know what was going on. You know, I was kind of learning. Yeah. It took, I want to say a good year to process it. And when it finally went through, the attorney was like, whew, you're like a dog with a bone. You were not letting that go. I said, listen, <laughs> it's a learning process, but I was not yeah. giving up. And even to this day, everybody laughs because I have attorneys always go, you will not let a deal. It could be looking like it's, on life support and i'm like i'm gonna resuscitate this deal and it's going to close because i'm getting this homeowner out of the situation so like i said i'm always trying to help the homeowner and make sure i get them from under if there's something that i know like there's no way possible i'm gonna let them know that there's no way possible based on not me based on something the bank has done and it may not even be an offer thing it's sometimes behind the scenes an investor thing an investor at the bank is not willing to do it so that's something that i can't control but besides that i will close the deal I will fight it to the bitter end. I love it. Like I said, I, I mean, when we originally met, it was the house in Fairlawn was a short sale. Um, that I don't know if you remember the details of, of the property. Or I remember the I remember, it and it came up that there was some stuff that came up in the inspection, and the buyers kind of got a little nervous and walked away because of it. Well, honestly, I they were nervous because the house was on the highway. Let's just start. <laughs> There was a highway. Going, that little detail to you. The highway went through the kitchen in that house. <laughs> and we were doing everything possible to convince, convince everyone that that was not a highway. I mean, I don't know. It was, it was a difficult, but that, yeah, that was a short sale. And I think that through that property, I learned a lot about the short sale process mm -hmm. and, and what the banks were willing to do. And like you said, several appraisals later, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not the same as dealing with a direct seller who's going to make the decisions or dealing with the bank on the foreclosure side. Mm -hmm. if they're going to make a decision a bit faster. So the short sale process, it's a, it's a good conversation for people to understand. Um, I feel like there's tremendous opportunity in short sales. If you're patient uh, as a, as a seller mm -hmm. for the first time, and even for an investor, I feel like there's tremendous upside um, you know, if you're a flipper, again, patience and understanding the process is a huge value, um, you know, to, to the think, investor as well. I think the biggest thing as an investor is you have to understand the property. So I tell investors all the time, short sales are based on comp. So if the house needs a lot of work, you probably can get a better deal off of it. Right. If this a house is flawless, I don't care how much you try to bring the bank down. They're not going to bring it down because they, they may bring it down a little bit. They, they're going to have a value and they're right. not going to negotiate off of that value a lot because they know that if it goes to foreclosure for some reason, they're going to get maximum dollar because the property is in good shape. Right. So of course, they're going, lot, yeah. yeah, they're going based off their appraisal. So mm -hmm. ultimately you're not, there's nothing you can do to trick them to, to take a better deal if that's right. So for the investor, I mean, the investor's job is to obviously be smart, understand the market, work with realtors mm -hmm. like yourself who, who can explain the process and, and not waste time. Um, you know, and like you just said, if the property is in really bad shape, been baking for six months, plumbing's missing, the electrical box is gone, you know, vandalized. Yeah, you can come in and, and, and most likely ask for- And probably negotiate, yeah. And, and negotiate down and, and the bank might see that more appealing because FHA most likely won't mm -hmm. loan anyways. Um, Correct. So, so yeah, I mean, it's a great conversation to have. I'm sure people are going to have some questions. Is there anything else you want to throw in as we wrap it up? Like I said, we covered a ton. Your experience over the past 18 years 
um, has definitely, like you're very fluent in, in the conversation, but I'm confident with what you're saying and obviously you understand um, not just the short sale market. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we can go into any topic in real estate and you, you understand it well, but, but that's a specialty that you have. And again, I, have, I haven't had too many discussions with realtors that really focus in on the short sale. Um, but I had a chance to, to bring that up and, um, you know, we'll post. There's a long, things. hard learning curve. I, you know, I tell people all that it's a learning curve and it's a hard learning curve. And I don't care how much you think you know, every day it changes because there's certain things like literally with COVID, there's different changes now compared to what it was two months ago with the yeah. bank. So you always have to stay, you have to keep educating yourself. And that's the big difference between being a short sell specialist and just being an agent. You have to constantly educate yourself on what is going on with the market, but also what's going on with the banks and how they are handling the market. 